Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first ever episode of Auto Cafe, a webcast podcast where I talk about the news with um, a bunch of other people, and we just chat and see where this goes. So joining me uh, today, I have with me my good friend, Sasha Sorg, and uh, my other good friend and cohort on this channel, Austin Stevens. That's your name, right? Okay, good. So um, why don't we begin talking about what's the latest in the news from the past week or so. Um, why don't we start off with a very special Rolls Royce that uh, came out, or at least came out in a press release. It's not really out for anyone. It was made bespoke by Rolls Royce for um, a very rich person. It is called the Sweptail, and here it is. What do you think? I would not be a customer. That's for sure. That's for sure. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't pay an exorbitant amount of money for for this. I would if it was less than fifty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I think my my issue with the car is when I look at it, it's there's something about rich people and yachts. They just love to make um, everything look like a yacht because perhaps the yacht is like the biggest purchase they make and like the yacht is a big status symbol. But like if you look at this swept tail and you read the um, press release, they're all like, wow, look at this. It's based off a yacht. And you, yeah, I guess I guess it is. You ready for the interior shot? Sure. I don't know what's going on back there. I guess you put your luggage your luggage in the back. Is that there only one one headrest right in the middle? <laughs> yeah, right. There's a person, they they like lounge in the back, just like on the, on their elbow looking up, and it's just like, ooh. So I don't know. Yeah, it's for teenagers that are overseeding, and then the one who's laying in the lay down in the back there. <laughs> I don't think the person who spent however much money it costs to um, get this car designed and built. I don't know if they have a teenager, or if they have a teenager, I don't know if they have a close relationship with that teenager. Probably not. Well, probably somewhere overseas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably somewhere overseas. Yeah, so. Male no, no changes. one's into that, eh? No one's, no one's into the, the interior. I, I like funky interiors, and I like how it's, it's just different. Um, but to me, it just doesn't make any sense. But I do like the, the wood trim, and I guess that's where the yacht part comes in, right? Because of the wood. Yeah. Um, Can you go back to that rear shot, interior shot. Let me do that for you. Clicking away here. Um, well, I mean, it's a Rolls Royce, so it's probably going to be very well engineered. Um, yeah, like it does look like really elegant, but it looks like a boat. It does. It really does. And like, we don't we use the word boat like as a derogatory um, kind of like. Like it that physically car, looks like a boat. <laughs> like that car is a boat, and like this one is literally a boat. The only difference is that you can't drive it. On water, clearly on this picture, you're, it's being driven near water, but you can't drive it on water. Um, but yeah, it does look like a yeah. like a boat. I don't. I just. What I find also really funny is just how um, Rolls Royce they like make a very bespoke car, and oh. you know someone has spent a significant amount of money on it, and then they like make a press release about it. Like, look at someone spent a lot of money, and I'm we're gonna use this to market ourselves better. Would any of you buy just a regular Rolls Royce, just out of curiosity? I would. Um, it wouldn't be my primary vehicle, but uh, if if I had a disposable income, I I definitely would. Yep. Which one would you get? I'd get the Phantom. Yeah. Same. Phantom. Isn't that isn't that getting discontinued? Yeah, but that's to me that's the only one that you know the iconic Rolls Royce look. That's that's just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. What about the Ghost, which basically looks the same but isn't? I guess as Rolls Royce. -y. That's that's a current one. Well, there's 
Okay, so there's the there's the Phantom, which is was the most expensive Rolls Royce that came out in I think oh three, and then has been like slowly kind of modified or not modified, but updated since then. And and then the Ghost came out a couple of years ago as sort of like a cheaper Rolls Royce. I mean, whatever that means. But it's like <laughs> it's actually based off the seven series chassis. I think it has the same V twelve engine that's in the seven series. Um, but is still a Rolls Royce and still expensive. Yeah. Have you seen? A, you want me to show you a picture of it? You're, no, you're probably going to be like, "Oh, that's it, they." I mean, Rolls Royces just look like Rolls Royces these days. What do you think about like the two, the two seater Rolls, or like the sorry, not the two seater, but the two door okay. Rolls Royces, like the the Wraith, which is kind of cool, or the Dawn, the new convertible, the Dawn. That came out. The uh, the Wraith. I I've seen pictures of that. I don't really mind that, but if if I was to choose only one Rolls Royce, I would pick the Phantom. That's that's just my view. I got a picture of the ghost here. That's the ghost. That's the ghost. Yeah. It looks like a classic Rolls Royce, that's for sure. Classic would definitely be a good word to describe it. Um how about classy? <laughs> Mm. No. <laughs> those, those honestly, those rims look like they're from like I don't know Canadian Tire steel rims. That, they're like the plastic. Like, oh, honestly, yeah, but I'm sure they're like magnesium alloy and they're like four digits in price tag. Oh, undoubtedly, yeah, of course, of course. Any more to say about Rolls Royce, or shall we move on to the How many next topic? Does it have? How many? How many? Oh, how many <laughs> cup holders does the Rolls Royce? Which Rolls Royce do we want to look up? The Ghost or the? Um, let's, oh, let's look at the current one, the Ghost. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Rolls Royce Ghost cup holders. I, I, I doubt I doubt that information is freely available. <laughs> I'm sure it's held, kept a secret. This is um, information. I am just getting. And, and, and will it hold my big gulp? <laughs> will it hold your? I'm just getting pictures of cup holders when I search it here. Um, so, yeah, um, cup holders. The word cup holders. There's machined aluminum cup holders. Um, these are what cup holders look like. Um, wow, I haven't seen those before. Yeah, look wow. at these ones. Well, that one holds I don't even know like, if you could put um, any. You'd even want to put anything in there. I know the one thing that like luxury car companies love doing is they like love to like have. They're not cup holders, but they're like kind of flute holders for like wine glasses or like oh, champagne, okay. champagne flutes. So you like so they basically grab onto the base. Yeah, yeah, they do. They like they just have these like little like kind of like things that like click in yeah. that click in and it holds it there. But I just like I'm always curious like. What about the sloshing? Like, if you go around a corner or something like that, like, does it have happens? stabilizers or like? That would be cool. That would be super cool. <laughs> be for really high tech. But like, okay, so you're drunk and then you like have to like fendangle your flute into this like special cup holder, and then you want to pour yourself some champagne. Like, man, the rich people just have it so hard. Like, yeah, that sounds like a tough life. A tough I mean, you life. don't want to spill up stuff, right? Especially on like, what what is it? The bull hide leather. The bull hide leather, the whatever leather that they chose. The yeah, you don't want to ruin leather. That. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm thinking we should move on um, because um, there's some really big news out of China, everyone's favorite country, and that is that they're going to bring back the old Saab 93. Oh, really? Except it won't have the Saab name, and it'll be a fully electric car by the company. NEV Nevs. 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 So Nevs. Ne Nev. Never buy it. Never buy it. <laughs> Never going to sell well. <laughs> okay. What's going on with the mirrors on the side there? Like, They're probably video camera mirrors, I, I'm sure. That's um, all the really, you know, I know for. That's what, that's what Volvo had, right? You, uh, Volvo. So they had um, no. They had. I think if you if you turn a signal in the camera, well, that, turns well, your on. your Honda has that. My Honda has that, but that to me that's more of a gimmick. It's you don't use the you don't use the blind spot. 
I use it probably a third of the time. Yeah. But I just prefer shoulder checking or looking at the mirror. Does it take too long? It can take too long. And this, I've noticed that if I have satellite radio on and I turn signal and the camera on, there's like a two second delay. And that's that's actually a long time if you want to like all of a sudden switch lanes. So it's just easier to shoulder check. It's easier, quicker, yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Thanks for that, guys. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I love it. Yeah, sometimes with technology, it's like, oh, like, we have this new technology. It's going to make your life so much more convenient. And then you just sit there waiting for it to actually do what it's supposed to do. And that would be an example of that. Um, here, I'll show you some more pictures of this glorious Nevs, Nevs 9.3. And is this, is this confirmed they're actually going to make it? Or is it just a concept? Well, oh, it does say concept in the back. Yeah, I well, I mean, OK, they, they say they're going to make it. Um, they say that it's going to have a claimed driving range of 186 uh, miles, um, whatever that is in kilometers. And um, so it's about 300 kilometers. Yeah, but it's really going to be sold in China, and it's just another electric car. It's interesting to think of how where they're going to squeeze the battery in a car that was designed for gasoline. Um, but it's just what I find interesting is the fact that you know Saab died. Oh man, like eight years ago now? No, nine years ago? No, not that. It was not long ago. Excuse me, I'm totally out of it. I think it was only like five years ago. Saab died five years ago. Parts of it got sold to the Chinese, and this is what they're this is what they're making with it. Look at they might even make a special version of the nine three X. I love how they're still using the CRV. <laughs> but that is what the Saab nine three X used to look like. But um, yeah, it's I, it's just interesting that they're it's the, the the old Saab, an old Swedish car, is becoming a Chinese electric car. But, Chinese made, yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess that's what happens. Um, I was actually looking, I've been, well, I've been car hunting for a while and I was thought maybe it'd be interesting to get a Saab and I've been looking at this Saab and I'm like, hmm, just gets worse and worse. Any of you guys like Saabs? Do you even care about Saab? I wouldn't say I care about it. Like if, you know, when they went bust, I was, I wasn't happy about it, but I wasn't really, you know, I never sat in a Saab, so I can't really say what it's like, to be honest. I never had that opportunity. Yes. They do. Have, they do have comfortable seats, um, and they are quirky. And I guess even if you like look at their model lineage, they've just always been really quirky. Like they never do the mainstream sort of thing. But uh, okay, I think we can move on because this is car related, but it's tech related as well. And mm. that is that Apple is introducing a new feature to the update, the iOS 11 update for your iPhone called Do Not Disturb While Driving. And as everyone knows that people have been texting and driving and all that dangerous stuff, this might be a good feature to curb people from doing that. Here's the question, will it work? Now, is it something that you have to turn on yourself or is it just automatic? So what they kind of say is if you look, there's um, a button here that says turn on while driving. So you just like click that and it sort of will sense um, kind of how your phone connects. So like if you if you regularly connect to a Bluetooth device, um, then it will know that, okay, you're connecting to a Bluetooth device and then it uses kind of Wi-Fi positioning to determine whether you're driving or not. And I guess that has to go with how quickly Wi-Fi networks pass you. And so they can kind of figure out using that information whether or not you're driving, and then you can, it will automatically turn on. So then it'll know if you're driving. So I guess I guess it goes by the speed, like how fast you're going, and if you're on like a road or highway. Yeah. Right? But um, and your Bluetooth. The, the question I had earlier was, how would it know if you're just a passenger? So great question. Um, there is um, a thing where if you want to use your phone and you're, and you're driving, you can say, I'm not driving just by clicking, clicking this, this button here. Oh, okay. um, so, <laughs> so if you're driving and now you have to click an extra button to get a notification. There are some other things like um, that they mentioned in the keynote um, 
that basically mean that if you can put special people in an emergency sort of favorites contact list where they can they can get to you a certain way. And then there's another thing too where if you um, if you get a message, you can actually have it auto reply um, saying, "I'm driving right now. I'll get back to you when I when I'm done." And then another message will get sent. If this is urgent, reply with urgent, and I'll get the notification. Okay. So, yeah. So I mean, it, it seems like a good feature. I think it's about time that some cell phone manufacturers figure out ways to. Austin shaking his head in the corner there. I think it's about time a cell phone manufacturers figure out ways to get people to stop using their cell phones while driving. Do you use your cell phone while driving, Austin? All the time. Yes. What? Well, like okay, I don't text and call and drive and stuff, but like I, I'm always playing music and stuff, and the app that I have kind of requires me to open my phone sometimes to change the song. What app? It's uh, not. It's called PlayTube, but. <laughs> Okay, let's get over that one. I mean, I agree <laughs> with you actually on this one. This is something I do want to rant about as well because I use Spotify, and so Apple has their own music streaming service, and so they don't let Spotify use Siri. So if I am driving and I want to say listen to a specific song, if I was using Apple Music, I could just say to Siri, "Hey Siri, play whatever," and then it will play that song. But I can't even say, "Hey Siri, play Spotify." I have to manually go in the app to open up Spotify. So like, I have to make sure I have these like extra steps. Like when I get into the car, I have to like open my phone and hit Spotify and wait for Spotify to load before I can even set off. And then even then, if I like, if I'm like just, just humming along, um, there's just no access. Like they made Siri available to developers in the last iOS update last year, um, but they didn't allow any access to music kind of control, which is kind of annoying. So. Yeah, that's the thing. I use, you know, I use music on my phone as well, and it's it's really, really annoying when like something goes wrong with Spotify not being loaded up, or I listen to the radio and now I want to listen to Spotify. Like, I'm if I don't want to touch my phone and I decide I want to listen to Spotify, like I'm hoop. There's no way to do that, and even with this feature, there'll be no way either. Yeah, that's right. No. This, the, the, yeah, the concept yeah, is really good. Really good. Like, it, it, is it is really, really futuristic. futuristic. But at the same time, it's like some a lot of people don't want that feature. I don't know. I to be honest, I, I can see people having or downloading the app and like, okay, I want to be safe. Or you're gonna download it to save for your wife or kids or whatever. Well, it'll right? be part of the phone. You don't even have to download it, you'll just update it, it'll be part of your phone. Oh, so you'll, they'll turn it on. So I can see people using it for like say let's say they can use Monday to Friday. I can see them using it for a week, and after like, okay, I this this is, I don't want to do this anymore. I just I want to keep calling, I want to keep texting, even though it's illegal and you know unsafe. People are still gonna be like, okay, it's a red light. I think it's okay, I think it's okay to text. I think, I think they're gonna do that. Right? They're gonna get annoyed, like okay, because not having access to your phone while you're holding holding it, like you just keep people, you know. Like, if they want to send a text, they're going to send a text. They're not going to wait until they get home or stop on the side of the road, right? Yeah. The, 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 idea, the idea is I do like the idea, but I can see people just giving up maybe a week or whatever after. So, like, I find, like, ever since I started driving, I find having to touch my phone to do anything really stressful because, like, I'm trying to focus on the road and, like, looking down or anything like that is just, like, but I but so many people do like I have I have a former colleague who's like Snapchats while driving and I'm just like watching the Snapchat going like oh my gosh what are you doing and the, the sad thing like that is that's really common so like there's a bit of a kind of attitude societal issue going on here that's a bit greater and I don't yeah it's a good question as to whether or not having this mode will help maybe it will help some people um, I don't know yeah well we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and yeah. Well, and the the other thing is it's only this is only on, um, on iOS. I'm not quite sure what Android has. Do any? No one has an Android phone here, do they? No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Austin has an iPhone. Sasha has a BlackBerry. Yay! Um, oh, there's Austin, Austin's damaged phone. <laughs> iPhones and smash screens. They just seem to go together so well, don't they? It is the right angle and yeah. okay. Next up, what else do I have here listed in the pictures? Oh, 
Sasha, since you're a big Volkswagen fan, yes. uh, some photos came out of the Tuareg. How do you pronounce it? Tour Tour Tuareg. Um, there's a new Tuareg. I hear Tuareg from the Brits, but I think Tuareg in North America. Was Was sagen Sie Deutsche? Tuareg. Sie sagen Tuareg. Do they really say that? I, I think it depends on the dialect. Like my grandparents say Tuareg, and I hear like Tuareg, like if you live in the south. But I think they generally know what model you're talking about. Anyway, it's just a generic looking mid SUV. I think I think what I've read is they want to position it between the Tiguan and another weirdly spelled word and Actually, the can Atlas. You, can you pop it back up, please. Yes, of course. One moment. Because, because it doesn't look that different, does it? I think if you if you like look really closely, you can the the taillights will be a bit slimmer. I think that's just a sticker that they put over top of it to kind of confuse you. Is it is it is it, is it just me or like does it look like a Macan but bloated, slightly bloated and maybe confused. maybe it's off the same know. platform. I mean, Volkswagen and Porsche are friends anyway. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good yeah. question. Yeah, it looks like, you know, yeah, my neighbor has one of those, and it just, it does look a does look lot like it from behind. It just looks a little bit more sleek. And yeah, yeah. Well, I thought Sasha would be interested in that. I think more interesting. It, it, does, it doesn't look bad, but it's, you know, I, it's I, still, like the, I still like the Touareg 2 looks. And that looks a little dull compared to, like, say, more modern cars now. But, you know, that was a good look back then. Now this one that you're showing us, it, it it doesn't grab my attention. If I see it down the road, I'm like, oh, it's a newer Volkswagen. Okay. Volkswagens are looking quite like, um, what's the word? Sim the same samey these days. They all have that same line going across. Their, they very much try to like do a consistent kind of design theme. Almost like every a generation, cutter, right? Yeah, I guess like like so for this generation, all the cars are gonna look basically like this in their various shapes and then for the next yeah. generation they're going to have a nice line across the shop and then the next generation they're going to be a bit more rounded they just seem to kind of like come up with weird things and if you read like german auto magazines they have a couple you know they like the german auto magazines always have like the new volkswagen luck and then i yeah. guess they must do that. i guess it must be just a volkswagen thing to kind of like come up with these looks but i guess it's a common thing because if you look at mazda they do that as well anyway the the tour yeah. is is whatever. I think more interesting is um, a concept that came from BMW for the 8 Series, um, which I think looks really nice. That that looks pretty nice. I see Austin looks scrunching like his Martin. face. <laughs> oh, it looks like it. Oh, that's a good point. It does look like an Aston Martin. Hmm. Yeah. I can't remember the model, but oh, oh yeah. yeah, it looks. Well, well, like, the, the front does look like an i8. Like oh. regular model, but like a BMW. Well, it has a double kitty grill. Yeah, yeah, the the classic BMW. Um, um, yeah, yeah, from the back, it definitely looks like an Aston Martin. Uh, I think it looks nice. I think it looks oh, yeah. really sleek. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I I'm really excited about it. I mean, I I remember as a kid when the eight series was out, like back in the '90s. I always thought that was a neat looking car, but it was like very '90s, like angular with pop-up headlights um this is very much of its age as well and it probably will compete against um the the um the aston martins basically i'm sure that'll be what bmw is going after so um you know if you can't beat them look like them i guess yeah. you could say it definitely looks luxurious that's for sure it does yeah, yeah. how much will i wonder how much they'll probably be two hundred thousand dollars <laughs> So those are the car news that I was able to find. There's a bunch of other boring stuff that happened, like a super expensive Porsche. Oh, and then Honda, Honda also had an event where they talked about um, working on an autonomous future and making autonomous cars. And they have a goal. Might as well get into this. They have a goal to um, reach level four automation by 2025, which is only like what is that? Like eight years away. Yeah, what do you, how, how do you guys feel about automated or autonomous cars? Because that's a big, a big thing these days. Well, I, just quick question: What does what's 
level four because I see level three in the article down there, but level so four, level three mean? vehicles capable of level three freeway driving. So I guess that's where the car can drive on the freeway itself. Basically, you say go, and then it'll merge you onto the freeway. And if you need to change lanes, so something I guess akin yeah. to the Tesla autopilot. Though I don't I don't think the Tesla autopilot quite has level three classification. It's kind of a bit of a vague thing. The classifications they don't quite mean much at this point. It's just yeah. definitions. Level four, according to this article, means that the car is capable of holding most driving situations itself. But you're probably going to need a steering wheel still, so that if the car goes, Wah, you can you can get back on that on okay. you know, in control. But then of course, that brings up a whole issue where the car goes ah, and then you're going to go ah, and you're still going to get in an accident. <laughs> um, and then there's level five, which is kind of basically saying the car is completely autonomous. You literally, it's just a seat and you punch in your destination. There's no steering wheel and probably just drives you where you go. It's basically like a train. Pardon? Those Google cars, I think they have. Yeah, like that weird Google car that came out that Google oh, okay. kind of presented a couple of years ago. It's another case where it's really futuristic and cool, but there's a lot of people that are still really old school with vehicles. And I don't think would adapt to that very well because like, like there's still the thousands, like hundreds of thousands of people, even just in the area that they drive standard. And it's so, like that, that's that's thing. a good point. I was thinking that too. I mean, right now, you know, people that you know love cars or love driving, they drive stick. So probably in let, let's just say thirty years from now, when let's say majority of the cars are autonomous. I think that enthusiasts will still rather have the old fashioned and drive themselves, right? Like be the driver. That would yeah, be me. <laughs> like, like us, yeah. I mean, but, that would be nice to be driven around, but 100% of the time or majority of the time, probably not. Like, yeah, it would yeah, be cool for like, like taxis and stuff. stuff. Uh, yeah, and maybe it, it would save a lot of money. You wouldn't have to pay for employees and stuff, you just have to pay for. Uh, vehicle cost, but still, like it, just, like I think taxi service is one of the best. Yeah, taxis, transit, transit stuff, stuff, stuff like that. that yeah. yeah, yeah. But then, what about all the drivers who have been employed? What are we going to do about them? <laughs> That's the big issue right now. Is is how automation is sort of taking jobs away? Because, for instance, Uber's like exa the example that you know, Uber is an example of of a taxi thing. Right now, they're not autonomous. They're just not having employees. Um, yeah. And yeah. so, um, but they want to go towards autonomous. And I think, yeah, I guess it would be convenient to just be able to, like, I want a car, it shows up, get in the car, go wherever you need to go. And, like, you don't have to worry about sitting in traffic, which will probably still be a thing, even with autonomous cars. Um, and then, uh, in that. But I, like, I love driving so much that, like, just the thought of autonomous cars being the norm is, like, strangely devastating to me because like I know that the consequence of autonomous cars being the norm would be for instance you know if you as a driver might have to pay exorbitant insurance um, fees just to be able to yeah drive that's on true own. because if there's more human error right and more human error and your insurance will go up your premiums will go up yeah I, I, I can see that happening in the future yeah definitely because so <laughs> you'll basically well basically I mean yeah because even if you think about I guess I guess the like the last analog analog to this would be like going from horses to cars, and so I mean horses are now quite an obsessive <laughs> recreational thing, yeah. but and you can you can ride horses on the road, but they just don't quite adapt that well. I mean it, I'm curious I'm curious what the transition from now to autonomous cars will be. I think it won't be as fast as many people think. I mean this eight years to level four autonomous cars, which is Honda's kind of goal. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they'll have the technology to that point, but I don't know. I'm not quite sure what that'll look like in terms of consumer. What the consume, how that looks like. As a I can see it being maybe you know popular in countries like in Asia or you know where like dense population people just don't want to drive in in the city or in the traffic, right? And I I think in my opinion, that's probably where it's going to be most most popular. Also, pedestrian safety, right? Um, what was that autonomous car from Mercedes that was like crazy looking? It would detect pedestrians within a kilometer. 
something, something like that. A it's, I think. Yeah, it was. It was yeah, it was. It was something you know, crazy. Like you know, they would detect, you know, deer, people, or whatever, and they would like just highlight them in red on like the screen on the computer. Um, but yeah, no, I think when it comes to pedestrian safety, yeah, there's a good point to that, um, because there's no human error. But you know, computers aren't perfect, right? There's nothing's perfect. <laughs> no, no, no. Computers are definitely not perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I mean. There is, I think I do believe also the argument that, yeah, I think autonomous cars probably will drive safer. I'm curious what they're going to be like, you know, you're to drive around. Like, is, once you get a couple of autonomous cars out there, you know, the first ado early adopters getting them, like, are they going to be like the annoying drivers on the road that you always yell at anyway? Yeah. yeah. Or, like driving super slow and cautiously, like, oh no, I can't make this move. There's a person over there. You know, I just, I'm really <laughs> curious what point. it's like to drive around an autonomous car. If I had one, I would say the good point is, let's say if you're going out to eat somewhere or you're at a friend's house, wherever, and there's like a heavy downpour and you park far away and it can pick you up, I think that's good. And if it picks me up, I'll get in and I'll start driving. That's, but I think, does Tesla have that right now or no? I know Audi's working on a self-parking so I think BMW up, has one, but it's pretty rudimentary. If it would pick me up, I'm happy and I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds that sounds great. So we want both, basically. <laughs> We're agreed <Yep>. on that. <laughs> yes, yes, we all just yes. nod our heads. So okay. Um, well, any other things you guys want to talk about? No, I think today we're good. I want to talk about <laughs> road rage next time. You want to talk about road rage next time? Yep. Okay. What do you? Where you? Just, are you just full of road rage? You know me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm till I'm totally game for road rage. Maybe autonomous cars will help us uh, avoid road rage. And thank you so much to the zero people who have watched this live. Uh, <laughs> this is the first episode of Auto Cafe. We'll see where this goes. We're gonna keep on trying to make it better. And uh, like and subscribe, all that YouTube gubbins. Take care. Bye, Ciao. everyone. Bye.